Hello YouTube, welcome back campaigners. This is Campaign Terrain, as ever, I'm your host Cross. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make some really simple, two different kinds of stalls for your markets, as well as some uh, notice boards with the placard holders in them. So these are really super, super simple. They are cheap, they are easy, I think you'll enjoy it. So stick around after the bump and I'll show you how to do all these things. Um, during the bump, please like, share, subscribe, a couple other links for you to click on. I'd sure appreciate it if you could help out the channel. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in just a minute. Thanks for coming. going to jump right into supplies and tools and uh, uh, these are pretty simple. The easiest way I found to make these is with items from Dollar Tree. So what I got was this for this dollhouse furniture. I got the dressing table with the little drawers in it. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. It's just dollhouse and it's this table. Uh, that was a dollar. You'll see how we use it in a minute. I also got these fake Jenga blocks, which are just called Tumbling Tower Game, also at uh, Dollar Tree. So those blocks are right here and come out to make a, a, a pretty good size when you combine them into different, sh uh, different shapes, glue them together. So we'll cover those in just a second. But they start out like this. We'll just open that up and use those in a moment. Okay, you're gonna need some tongue depressor type uh, popsicle sort of sticks. Uh, I suggest these, they're wider, they co cover more space, they're easier to use than the popsicle sticks, you don't have to glue them together as much. Um, the craft sticks will work, popsicle sticks will work, but these with their, with their larger size will work better for you. And that's it for the main body. Um, to hold them together, we're gonna need glue. You can pretty much use any kind you want. I t experimented with PVA glue, with the go-to I used in another video, with uh, tacky glue, and with various kinds of super glue with the baking soda trick. All of them will work for you, whichever one's convenient for you. So basically you're gonna, just gonna want need a glue for those. Um, for, for this particular experiment, uh, for the video, I'm gonna be using my trusty hot glue gun, but that is not required. Um, hot glue actually doesn't work as well as the others. It's much quicker, but it leaves more gaps in wood. I'm just using it because it's expedient. Okay, to cut all of the pieces of wood, you're gonna need either a pair of scissors, a pair of nips, a knife, or a saw. And it really comes down to which one you wanna use. I used a combination of these for different types of wood and different shapes. So saw, knife, nipper, scissors if you need them. After the cut, uh, to smooth off the edges, you're gonna want, I have a sanding stick that's sandpaper on a stick, but you can use any sandpaper work for that. And then if you really want to, um, there's a vise for holding the pieces together while the glue dries. I mean, a, a clamp, not a vise. Um, that's purely optional, you don't need that. What I used for most of this, in fact, was a pair of, I mean, uh, just strips of tape to hold it together, and you'll see that in a minute. Okay, so that's it for the parts we're gonna need. I'm gonna clear a couple things out of the way and then start to build, be right back. Okay, quick word about cleaning up the pieces. As you see, opened up the Jenga block thing. One of those has this copyright thing on it. You, won't, you don't need to do anything about that because we can just glue that inside and it'll be it'll hit and be hidden. You'll never have to see it. On the bottom of the, which will become the top of the dresser, on the bottom side, there's a, a trademark thing there. Um, if you are going to paint it, you can leave that and you can just paint over it. If you're going to only stain it or not color it at all, you're probably going to want that gone. Um, the easiest way I found to get rid of that was either take some sandpaper and just sand that off or the side of a blade and scrape it off. So I'm going to remove that and I'll be right back. All right. See by the dust here? Got rid of that. Um, to Avoid potentially gouging into the wood and making it look bad. I went ahead and used sandpaper and sort of sanded that in a circle just to get rid of all that. Got a few, uh, you can notice it if you really look, but you'd have to be looking for it to see it. Okay, that's the base of your, of this particular type of stall already done. Now it has a lip all the way around it. 
and I like to put that at the back, which leaves these little little drawer poles at the front. But that's fine. I think it just adds a little decor to the booth and be fine. And I don't, I haven't changed it. I like this ridge to be at the back because that way I can sit things at an angle for the display purposes in the stall. Um, you don't have, you don't want. If it was a real stall, you wouldn't want your customers having to come up and reach over that lip to try to pull things. You'd want that at the back so you could angle things down so the customers could see it better, which is exactly what I've gone for here. Okay, to, you could simply put a lid on it, I'm gonna use this other one as an example, and have it flat, and that does look pretty good. But what I'm gonna do is make it angled like this one, and there's nothing to that. All I did for that was I picked an arbitrary angle. I didn't pull out my protractor. I mean, I could have pulled out my, my protractor and gone for that route, but I didn't. All I did is I picked an angle on here. I'm gonna go about a quarter inch down, and um, easy way to do that, I have quarter inch marks on my board, but you can do it however you want. you want to make sure that's on the part with the ridge, the part that you're using as the back. So I'm going to make that mark right here and right here. Then I'm just going to take any straight edge. In this case, I'm actually going to use one of the sticks. I'm going to take any straight edge and go from this front top corner to that line. Color in all of the parts I want gone. So I'm just gonna draw a line, and I know everything above that line I want cut off. Now, here's where it gets really simple. You can, if you want, take a saw and put it on that angle and cut all that, but you don't have to. This wood is really soft. So all I'm gonna do is take my nippers, line it up with that line, and Knit my way through that. Not all at once. If you do it all at once, you end up with a weird, weirdly shaped top, but you can just sort of cut your way through it following that line. Now, be careful. When you cut this piece off, it's going to go shooting out. Okay. And same thing on the front. It's obviously going to be a much smaller piece. You just want that little piece gone. And that's going to leave us our angle for our roof. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side of this, and then we'll talk about the roof for this model. Be right back. Okay, I've cut all those angles off. So what we're gonna do is take two of the popsicle sticks. The one is not gonna be long enough to use it for both parts. We're gonna take two of the popsicle sticks, or tongue depressors or whichever, and that one's split. We'll use that for a different project later. We'll take two of those, and all we're gonna do at first is Take our scissors or snips or saw or however you want to do it and cut off a 90 degree cut across there just to remove the rounded portion. Now, I like to save all my little pieces of cut off wood for rubble and such later, so I have a little catch jar here. So take one of those, cut it off straight across, and you take the other one and use it to line up if you want, or you can just do it by eyeball both times. Okay. Then, you want to take those and use the length of this as your guide for how long to make the next cut. You want to line it up at the end of the depressor, right here, and then at the other end again. You can make a mark, you can eyeball it, you can just hold your finger there, however you want to do it. But that is going to be our length. So then go ahead and When you do this, just be a little bit careful. You wanna make sure you keep this piece flat. The blade is gonna to want to curl it. Whichever piece curls can end up splitting. So, take like that, and then your second one, you can just use that to gauge your second cut. Just follow that line. And like I said, if you wanna round off those corners a little, Take that to some sandpaper, and uh, those are ready to go. Now, you want to take those and put them right next to each other, and then take another piece, anything shorter 
than the distance between these pegs because you don't want to run into those. So I'm going to take another piece of your, for want of a better term, lumber. And And like I said, any glue you want to use will work for this. It doesn't have to be this one. Make sure these two are aligned right up against each other and their ends are aligned. And then take your other piece and glue it across that gap. So that is our roof. Didn't do a very good job of centering it, but that's fine as long as it's those. this piece is between these uprights. So, again, you want to be careful of which is the front and rear of your piece. I like the sun visor part to stick out on the customer side. That way it would give a little bit more shade to the customer. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about there, but this is the front and I've made the shade stick out this way. You could center it if you want. You could slide it down if you want, but it can interfere with the height of your little salesperson depending on exactly how you cut yours and made yours. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide it to the front again like I did this piece. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the back edge to the back edge, centering that piece, and then you can glue it on however you want. So I've got a drop, drop on each corner. And then line it up with this back edge, press into place. And again, any glue will work. And that's it. It's done. That, that, one's, that one's done. It really is that simple and easy. Um, you can paint this, stain this, add banners to it, put a cloth roof on it instead. You could add bunting to the front, which is that colored ribbon. You can uh, permanently affix foods or swords or whatever the vendor is selling to it. If you want, you could glue them on or uh, make it, leave it completely modular like this so that you can put whatever you want on the counter. But that's the second one done. I mean, the second one of that style done. And for a dollar twenty in parts and glue, that is not a bad looking stall. So here it is compared to one of the figures, and that's one and that's one down. All right, give me just a second to organize a couple things. I'll be back to show you the other one. Okay, on this next one, I'm going to take two of these blocks, and it, I'm going to go ahead and take that one and get rid of it real quick, just so I know that I don't have to worry about seeing it again later. A little glue in there. Again, any glue that you want will work. And then you want to line those up completely all the way around. You're using the larger side of them face to face, and but you want all of the edges to line up. So that makes one central block all together. Now, once you've done that, we've got a couple options. You can place this so that the line between where you've glued together is visible from the front and these end up being the same width as your uprights like this or you can place it so that from the front it's hidden it's missing you can't see it but it's on top you can see it on the top but when you do that they are slightly wider so if you do that you'll have to take into account this little bit of gap right here where they don't quite line up I like to do it this way for a couple of reasons, so I'm going to show you that. Again, really simple. You could use a white glue and or super glue, and use a vise to hold this in place or clamp, and or you could use um, hot glue like I'm doing here. Whatever glue works for you. Now you want this to line up with the ground, so you want to make sure that your upright is pushed down and the back is smooth. So you can do that by pressing it down to the piece as the glue is setting up or tacking up or whichever glue you use. So that's one upright. This one's almost done. So then a little bit of glue on the other side, which I realize I'm doing off screen. Let me try this again. Line that up to the ground and to the back. So give me just a second and I'll come back and show you how to put the roof on. This works basically the same as the other. I trimmed a piece to fit lengthwise, just like I did with the other piece. And I'm only using one. I don't need two to go together because of the size. This is a much smaller booth 
and you'll only need one piece of popsicle stick. Now this is the easy way. I'm gonna be showing some more complicated ways in a moment, but let me show you the easiest way first. So we've got that set. You're gonna to wanna to take your glue. Again, any glue will work. Put that on the top, line it up to your piece, and make sure that these go to what will be the back corners all the way around. And that one's done. It's got, this does not have the angle. This has just the flat roof to it, which is fine. You can have it like that. I like this look better for what I'm gonna call a um, notice board. So I'll be showing you those in a moment, but this one is completed. Now, that's it for the easy way to make both of these. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, like, share, subscribe, do all of the other stuff. If you want to see more complicated versions of these, bear with me and I'll be right back to show you how we can complicate these but make them look potentially a little bit better. We are back. Okay, as you can see on this one, I have put a sloped roof on this one, just similar to the bigger booths. So what I did to do that was I simply decided what angle I wanted it cut at, took two of the boards and taped them together. Do not glue these. These are going to be uprights. So just took two of those, glued them together, large face to large face all the way around, lined up all the way around. Okay, once you have your little block, then you just decide what angle you wanted at. You can just choose. I suggest somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees. If you get any more than that, it looks sort of odd. You certainly don't want like a 45 degree angle. So I just picked a spot on one of these boards and cut it off. And I used a coping saw, but you can use whichever kind, whichever you want. And all I'm doing is following the line that I chose all the way across the board and cutting. So took that and I'm going to finish cutting through this one and I'll be right back with this one and this one done here and we'll show you how to put on that sloped roof. Okay, as you can see, I've angled both of those off. One of them sort of poorly, but it'll work. Take the piece of tongue depressor, cut it the same length as the full width of the piece. And then all I need to do is take my glue. Again, I'm using hot glues for speed, but I recommend white glue or something, you know, a little bit of better hold in this. And again, you want to take the back and line it up with the back of the board right at the edges and corners. And press that into place. Again, if you're using a different kind of glue, you can tape this into place. You can, if you can find a way to clamp this into place, however you want to do that. But you just want that to line up to the back so that it leaves you a little bit of a overhang there at a slight angle. And that one's good to go. I'm going to show you one more time. Again, full width, then a little bit of glue, line up to the back corners, and press into place, clamp into place, pin into place, however you want to do that. But there you go. And you've got a couple more little stalls ready to go. All right. One last complication for these, and I, that is turning this one with the flat roof into a notice board. Oh, no, I'm sorry, there's two more complications. All right, we're gonna have two more complications on this. Stick around if you want to. If not, that's fine, we'll see you next time. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll hit you the next time I'm around. The next two complications we're gonna do are we're gonna turn this into a notice board, and another one, we're actually going to add a little countertop to, gives it a little more space on it, covers up those lines, etc. So let's go ahead with the turning that into a notice board. I know a lot of people like to have a notice board in their game. So here's where, what I do with that. I take my, I'm not going to use hot glue for this one just because I think it makes a better seat and, uh, bond here. I'm going to take a block. You can also use the edge of a table, however you want to do that. But I'm going to use a, a, just a block of foam here just to elevate this front edge like this. So I'm gonna take that and place it against the edge so that it's level across. I'm gonna take one of the other boards, one of the other little blocks, slide it down in there just to hold the place. Then I'm gonna take a piece of the tongue depressor. I'm gonna take that and cut it the same length or just very slightly shorter 
in one of these in one of these blocks. Now that'll fit between there. So we want to take that and place it in that slot on top of the board we're using as a spacer. And I'm going to sit that there. And we want to, you can, now this is up to you, this next part. You can either have your board sit at the bottom like this, or if you'd rather and you like a gap to be in there, you can slide it up to the top or you can suspend it halfway between, however you want to do that. On this one, I believe I'm going to go to the top. I just like that little gap there underneath. And I'm going to leave that to dry. And once it's done, I can take out that spacer block off the front. So for now, set that off to the side. And what we'll end up with is one like this. Now this one I used hot glue on and it's down at the bottom, but that's it. So that's my little notice board. I left a flat top on that. I figured that didn't need to be as open and inviting as a sales booth did. So that's the notice board. All right, let me clean up a couple things and I'll be right back and show you how to put a countertop on these. As you can see, this one has a countertop on it. I haven't actually secured that. You can glue that however you want. I'm just showing you for the demo purposes. That's what it's gonna look like with the countertop on it. So what we're gonna wanna do is take a piece of um, one of the blocks, one of the, one of the sample blocks. We're gonna use that as our width indicator so we want to take that piece and we want to draw a couple of lines at each end of it we want to take those and carefully trim to them you do not want to use the scissors because that's going to bend this all up and this will break and fracture and you don't want that so make those lines a little darker so you can see them a little better. Okay, we're gonna take that and make sure we're at the right width. We're essentially just taking these out of the corner here. Okay, so got that cut and it fits in there. I wanna make sure that the back doesn't stick out. I can always just use a blade or a pair of scissors to trim that off if I want. And then at the front, we made this one off of the end, so I've got a little piece overhanging here, so what I want to do is make sure that it matches up like this one. So I'm just going to take that one little jagged piece here. Let me trim that up real quick. Done. Then I want to make sure that this piece and this piece are about the same length. That's too short. That seems good. And. I want these corners to be a little bit rounded, so I'm just going to take my sanding stick and round those off. And that is the finished product. I can then take that and place it in my little stall and move that in and be ready to go. All right, that is all of these done. Um, the next part I'm doing, I'm going to show you another way to make stalls like this from scratch without having to use the table. Okay, so I lied to you. I was gonna complicate these a little more, and I'm not. I'll show you kind of where I was going with that. I made some of these just out of XPS foam and some dowels. These are the square dowels. These are the ones that are made out of some uh, bamboo, ske bamboo skewers, etc. So you can kind of see where I was going with that. And it works the same way. You can see where I was kind of going with that. So today we've created smaller stalls, bigger stalls, and a bunch of these sign boards with the uh, placard holder in the middle. So stick around for some stills on this. I'm just gonna have a couple of quick ones here just to show you some up close shots. So you can kind of see how they go together when they're glued. And uh, I'll be back with a quick wrap up in just a moment.
have a campaigners. Bunch of market stalls and notice boards. I might have gone a little bit overboard. I might have even shown you a couple ways to overcomplicate some things. But all in all, these are super simple, super easy, super cheap, super quick. And I hope that I've inspired you to make some things. Over the, um, I like to inspire you to know that you can create it, you can design it, you can make it, you can easily find the things to make it with, and you can make it look good on your table and overall improve your game. And that's what I'm here for, just to inspire you and hope that I can teach a few things. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks for enjoying Campaign Terrain. Um, remember, like, share, subscribe, let your friends know. And I know you have been because this week, by the time this video comes out, I will have hit 200 subscribers, which is really cool. And I thank you for that. So, enjoy what I've been bringing you. Like, share, subscribe. Check out the other links in the bottom. And in the meantime, till next time, just know that I'm, I'm your host, Cross. This is Campaign Terrain. I love you. And I wish you luck in your campaign.